Hello and welcome to this video that is made possible by my Patreons. If you also appreciate my content and would like to support the channel, don't hesitate to visit my Patreon page, the link is in the description. Today we are going to talk about the bow. The 17 grams of wood and horsehair that make the sound of your instrument come out. I am going to talk about three different aspects of the bow. The differences between the bows, like materials, designs, etc. How to choose a bow and how to maintain your bow in perfect condition. The differences between the bows. Bows are divided into three categories according to the material they are made from. You have Pernambuco bows, like this one. Brazil wood bows, like this one. And carbon fiber, like this one. There is also a new kind of wood that is used as the supplies of Pernambuco and Brazil wood are getting limited. It is similar to the Brazil wood, so I'm not going to talk about it separately. You can consider it the same as Brazil wood. Brazil wood and Pernambuco are two kinds of wood. The best one used to make the best and more expensive bows is Pernambuco. Brazil wood is a kind of wood that is cheaper but has similar properties to Pernambuco. Brazil wood though isn't as durable as Pernambuco. The bow will lose its flexibility sooner than a Pernambuco bow. A Brazil wooden bow will have a lifespan of 5 to 10 years, but a Pernambuco one may reach even 100 years. The Brazil wooden bows are a good choice for beginners as they are less expensive, and the Pernambuco ones are for advanced players as they are more expensive. Carbon fiber bows are used the last 20 years and come in different qualities from economic to good and expensive bows. Carbon fiber is very durable although we can't say how it will be in 100 years as it is a pretty new material. I have to say that for the lowest price range I prefer carbon fiber bows than wooden ones. They have more tension, are straighter and keep the flexibility longer. How are bows made? I'm not going to explain how a bow is made because it is a too long story and it would be better to make a separate video about this. But I want to concentrate to some aspects of this procedure that are important to understand things later. When a bow is made it is a straight stick. The stick is cut out of a sheet of wood about 15 mm thick. Later when the tip is finished and the stick is brought about to measure, it is bent. To do that, the bow maker heats the stick up over a flame and bends it, like this, little by little. In this way, the fibers get stretched and as the bow cools down again, they remain in this bent position. And they repeat this process several times until they have the curve that they desire. Mainly, a new bow has to reach the table in the middle when it is completely relaxed. The bow is not cut in this shape because then you would cut through the fiber removing all the elasticity that it has. When the stick is made the maker can choose to make it round or octagonal like a stop sign. This will affect the way the bow plays and feels but we will come back to this later. Bows are made in different designs or models like violins, violas, cellos and double basses also do. You can see the differences in the tip and the frog, but also in the way the piece of wire is made, the width of the leather and the design of the screw. Makers copy the models of the old masters like Pecat, Tourt, Sartori and others, but also make their own models. For the double bass there are two different models. The French one that looks as the bow of a violin, viola or cello and the German one that has a larger frog and is holding another way. Mainly bassists use the bow that their teacher uses as they are uh, used in a different way with a different technique and everyone learns the one that his teacher learns. How to choose a bow? The first aspect to look at when choosing a bow as with everything else is of course the budget and I would divide this in two categories the beginners and practically everyone else. Beginners mostly buy the bow together with the instrument and case. Often you can make a choice between different sets. In this case you haven't got the chance to spend your budget as you want. If it is possible I would advise to put the biggest part of your budget into the instrument and buy a cheaper bow. 
When you start learning to play a boat instrument, you pass mainly three phases. The first one is to learn how to use the bow on a very basic way, just to produce the sound of the instrument. For this, you don't need a very good bow. The sound is produced by the instrument mainly and the bow affects like 10 or 20% of it. That means that at the beginning, the bow will not make that great of a difference. That's why I would suggest to spend all your budget in the instrument. In the second phase of learning, you start using the fingers of the left hand to play the notes and change between the positions. Still, the bow is not very important. When you have managed the fingers on the left hand, you arrive at the third phase and you go back to the bow. You start learning the different bow techniques like spiccato, staccato, jumping, small notes or steady long ones. Now the quality of the bow becomes important and it is your turn to go back to the violin or bow maker to choose a new bow with the help of your teacher. The best way to make a choice when trying different bows is to play a piece of music that demands some bow technique. In this way you will see which bow makes it easier to play this part. The bow is the tool that you use to make the sound that is in the instrument. It has to help you in this task and has to fit your necessities and compensate a bit your own defects. It is a bit like running shoes. Your legs put the power and speed, but your shoes give you the grip and comfort that you need to achieve a higher speed. Your bow is a great help to achieve the good sound quality of your instrument and high performance speed and must not be underestimated. Finally, there is still one aspect to look at, the round and octagonal bows and their differences. Round bows have the same radius over the entire circumference. Octagonal ones have eight thicker and eight thinner radiuses. That means that the round stick can vibrate in all the senses as easy, though the octagonal bow has eight stiffer and eight softer ways to vibrate. Round bows are more adventurous to say so than octagonal ones, which are more stable. It is a bit like a horse. The wilder or more adventurous ones are harder to ride, but are better in jumping and capable to do more. The calm and steady horses are easier to ride, will make a very nice long steady walk through the forest, but won't jump or compete. The round ones are harder to manage, but give more technique possibilities for the advanced player. The octagonals are stabler, easier to play, but won't give you the extra capabilities. But keep in mind that these are guidelines and not an absolute science. How to maintain your bow in perfect condition? First of all, let's see the different parts that make the bow. We start on this side of the bow, called the tip. Here we find that black and white part, that is made out of a layer of bone or plastic, which in the olden days could also be ivory, and a layer of ebony. Then we have the stick and we move to the other side. Here we find the wire, that can be silver, silver plated copper or even gold, and the leather that protects the bow, mainly cow leather, but it could also be lizard. Next we find the frog and the screw. The frog can be opened and has its own parts that I will show you now using this frog. First of all, let me remove the screw. This screw can have different kinds of threads and different thicknesses and must match the eye that is on the frog. This part of the screw is part of the original bow and can have different designs. Let's open the frog. Finally, here you can see the place where the end of the hair goes. If you want to see how a bow is rehaired, have a look to this video. And if you want to see how the leather and the wire are changed, have a look to this video. The most important thing to do to keep your bow in its optimal condition is release the tension after using it. In this way, the wood relaxes again and the fibers don't stretch back to the original position. As I explained at the beginning, the bow is bent to the curve you buy it in. If you leave it for a long period on its tense position, the wood will 
get straight again will lose its flexibility and playing capabilities. On the long term the bow would become worthless, so don't forget to relax your bow after playing. Besides that, bows are low maintenance. Keep the stick of the bow clean. When too much rosin gets stuck on the bow, the violin or bow maker will have to scratch it to clean it up and that will remove also a little bit of the varnish or even a bit of the wood and that would compromise the quality of the bow but also of course its value. The leather also gets worn out. Don't wait too long to change it as you will start wearing out the wood making a small pit here. This will also compromise its quality and value. And last but not least, rehair the bow every now and then. That means bring it to the violin or bow maker to put new hair on it. The hair gets worn out in two different ways. Every now and then a hair may break off when you are playing. When you lose more than a quarter of the hair on one side or it becomes too thin, it is time to put new on it. The horse hair that is used on the bows is not smooth and that's why it keeps the rosin and it scratches the strings, making the sound of the instrument. By using the bow every day and scratching it over the strings, the scales of the hair get off or get flattened. As this happens, you lose the grip. The notes don't have the same response as you are used to. Unconsciously, you will start putting more rosin to get more grip but it all will come off with the first note, leaving a nice white landscape over your violin. For professionals, rehearing every 6 to 12 months, and for amateurs, once every 18 months is usual. So that's it from me. I hope that you learned something today. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and visit my Patreon page. And I will see you next time again. Bye bye!